In this film, you will see a simple technique of the administration of Schlurthane for dental and outpatient anesthesia. This technique has proved completely safe during its continual use in my hospital for a number of years. Unconscious excitement and the dangerous conditions of laryngeal spasm, cyanosis and vomiting have all been virtually abolished. This fact has made it simple and safe for the trainee and occasional anaesthetist. The technique is based on simple clinical signs and the employment of two different methods of vaporization which are incorporated in the fluorethane control giving a maximum inhaled concentration of two and a half percent. Let's see it in diagram. For the induction, the patient's breath scale is used. The patient's breath passes to and fro through the vaporizer, whilst the fresh gases pass direct to the patient. By this method, the patient is automatically protected from an overdose as deep anesthesia produces respiratory depression. Therefore, less and less fluorothane is vaporized. Another safety factor of this method is that when the nose piece is used for dental, vaporization of fluorothane is again automatically stopped should the anesthetist forget to turn off the control, because there is then no rebreathing through the machine. By using the fresh gases scale, the position is reversed. Now the fresh gases vaporize the fluorothane, whilst the patient's breath still passes in and out of the bag should a mask be used. The fluorothane must then be turned off as soon as the patient becomes relaxed again. This you will see demonstrated in case number four. By teaching that the fluorothane should only be used when the movement is seen and turned off when it has stopped, there is no limit to the length of the administration and no possibility of an overdose. In fact, this technique with all its safety points, economy and the relaxation obtainable under light anesthesia would make it admirable for mass casualties in time of war. The cases you are going to see were filmed without any rehearsals and in the order they came in from the respective waiting rooms. They were not selected in any way. The camera and lighting they had to face made them more than usually nervous. Each was filmed continuously except for the few seconds needed to rewind the camera. With that exception, therefore, they are a true picture of the time taken. Now let us see a close-up of the machine in use and during an extended anaesthetic. The setting of the apparatus for induction is oxygen 1 litre, nitrous oxide 6 litres and fluorothane to the third division. After five breaths, The nitrous oxide is turned off and the fluorothane increased to the fourth division. After the eyelash reflex is abolished, the fluorothane is turned off and the nitrous oxide turned on again to six liters. Should the patient become light on nitrous oxide oxygen, the control is progressed to the sixth division so that the gases forcibly vaporize the fluorothane. And this is continued until the patient becomes relaxed again. The fluorothane is then turned off and the anaesthetic continued with nitrous oxide and oxygen. Here we have a robust man about to have 14 teeth extracted 
being given 75 milligrams of farpentone. A prop is inserted, which is optional, and the machine is set as already described. The fire pentone is not essential, but it does instill confidence. When the eyelash reflex is abolished, the surgery begins and a changeover to the nose piece with nitrous oxide and oxygen is carried out. The lack of surgical stimulus is noted by the man's unaltered relaxed position. The jaw is still relaxed, exhibiting an apparent deep anesthesia. And it will be seen that he comes round very quickly once having started. He is now speaking and able to answer questions. There is no suggestion of nausea or vomiting, nor any sign of distress or surgical shock. is a small girl of six years old about to have ten teeth out. Her eyelash reflex is being tested. Owing to her movement, it is obviously still present. Eyelash reflex is being tested again. She is now quite relaxed. With these short extractions, there is no need to continue with the nitrous oxide and oxygen through the nose piece. The initial dose of furthane is sufficient. Furthane, in my opinion, is the only anaesthetic which will produce this relaxed state for this relatively long operating time. Owing to the relaxation, her jaw must be held forward and the airway kept clear.
he suddenly returns to consciousness. Again, it will be seen that she quickly comes round to full consciousness. She is now already able to answer questions and spit into the gauze. There is no sign of nausea or vomiting. Next we have a difficult type of case. This boy of 13 is not given the initial dose of thiopentone, but nevertheless he shows no sign of second stage. The anaesthetist must watch the bag carefully. After only five breaths, the nitrous oxide must be turned off. It is better to take longer over the induction with a low concentration of fluorothane than a shorter induction with a high concentration because the high concentration undoubtedly causes more delay in recovery. Once again, it's a short extraction and no need for continuing with nitrous oxide. This boy shows quite a marked degree of second stage recovery, but it will be seen that he is perfectly all right as soon as he recovers from his dream. He suddenly focuses. Now he has become fully conscious and knows where he is. This sudden recovery is characteristic of fluorothane anesthesia. This is case number four, which I have referred to already. This demonstration shows how exactly the patient can be controlled should anesthesia become light. 
This safe lengthening of the operating time enables the dentist to continue with the extractions of 10 molar teeth and so saves the patient the misery of having to attend another day, which I think is an awful thing to happen. The routine induction is carried out with the five breaths before the nitrous oxide is turned off. Then test for the abolition of the eyelash reflex before surgery begins. To extend the length of anesthesia, should the patient become light, the fluorethane control should be turned to the sixth division using the fresh gases scale. When movement is abolished, it is turned off immediately. The patient is obviously becoming light. Now fluorethane is being forcibly vaporized by the nitrous oxide and oxygen and passing through the nose piece with the control at the sixth division. This is continued only until sufficient depth of anesthesia is obtained, whereupon the patient is again relaxed. The fluorethane must be turned off After two doses of fluorethane, the nitrous oxide is turned off and pure oxygen flushed through for a few breaths to speed recovery. Once again, there are no signs of nausea, vomiting, or surgical shock. False anesthesia is demonstrated in this next case. A young woman of 20 who is having two buried wisdoms and a molar removed. After the eyelash reflex is abolished, the nitrous oxide is turned on again to 6 litres and the fluorethane is turned off. It will be seen that the abolition of the eyelash reflex can give a false indication of the depth of anaesthesia. Should this happen, replace the mask for a few more breaths of fluorethane. Now we change over to the nose piece with nitrous oxide and oxygen only, and the fluorethane is turned off. Complete muscle relaxation can be seen by the patient's hands. The jaw is noted to be still relaxed, thus eliminating the use of mouth gags.
Again, she is exhibiting this apparent deep anesthesia, so her jaw must be held forward until she shows signs of recovery. When recovery does take place, it is sudden and without complications. The following three unselected cases show exactly the same method of giving flirta into outpatients. The main points to notice are the complete muscle relaxation, so essential for setting fractures, the absence of the powerful withdrawal reflex, and the return to full consciousness without any nausea or vomiting. But first, let us see a simplified apparatus for this type of work being used in close-up. For setting the simplified apparatus, oxygen 1 litre, nitrous oxide 6 litres, first end to the third division on the patient's breath scale. After five breaths, the nitrous oxide is turned off and the fluorothane is slightly increased to the fourth division. When the eyelash reflex is abolished, the nitrous oxide is turned on again and the fluorothane turned off. To extend the anaesthetic, the fluorothane control is turned to the sixth division on the fresh gases scale and then turned off as soon as the movement of the patient has stopped. This patient has a septic hand and is being anaesthetized by a general practitioner. The eyelash reflex is tested. Fluorothane is turned off and the nitrous oxide oxygen continues. It will be noted that there is only the slightest withdrawal reflex. During short operations, the anaesthetic can be discontinued as soon as the surgeon is given the word to start. During the time of recovery, bandages and dressings can be applied. This patient exhibits no residual effect of the anaesthetic. This patient of 88 had fallen downstairs eight hours before this film was taken. She had broken her wrist and badly bruised her head. The same technique that we have seen before is used again. The traction on the wrist will be seen to be very small owing to the complete muscle relaxation of the forearm.
The safety of Flurthane and the ease of its administration is amply shown here. The medical condition of the patient matters little as there is never any cyanosis nor any vomiting and full relaxation is obtained under light anesthesia. The patient's head injury is apparent here, but she is obviously none the worse for her anaesthetic. Next is a typical case of a young man who is about to have his toenail removed an operation with a recognized very powerful withdrawal reflex. The nitrous oxide is turned off as usual after the fifth breath and the anesthetic is continued with fluorescein and oxygen until the eyelash reflex is abolished when surgery can start. Notice the complete lack of movement, not only during the removal of the toenail, but also during the rubbing of the very sensitive nail bed with the gauze. Note the apparent recovery, the start of recovery, and the very characteristic return to full consciousness. Demonstrated here is a straight in as for outpatient on an old gentleman of 60 before the passage of sounds and cystoscopy, a common operation on old men. Note once again the complete lack of the second stage and the ease with which an airway is inserted. Note also the lack of stimulus during operation. Although in this case an inpatient is shown, these cases can be most satisfactorily done as outpatients owing to the quick and... 
We now come to a demonstration used by the fully closed circuit method. Control respiration with the fluorothane vaporizer on is only permissible for a short time in order to settle a patient after the introduction of a, with the aid of succinylcholine. In this case of hysterectomy, induction is with 200 milligrams of sarpentone with a 0.65 metropin, followed by the The patient is then inflated with oxygen and fluorothane for about three inflations. An intracheal path. The cup is blown up immediately, is now inflated with half a litre of oxygen and two and a half percent. Inflation then roughly one inflation every 10 seconds until normal respiration returns. The stent turned on as well.